Hey, hi. Uh, I did my graduation from BMS College in Bangalore itself from telecommunication, and then mm -hmm. uh, I was working as a quality analyst in the IT sector company. But I want to shift my career towards uh, SD as I'm quite interested in that because I really wanted to do that from initially. So mm -hmm. I that's why I got to know about this uh, uh, Zenbase or uh, Skillcoin. Got so it. I can introduce you for the same. College you did? Can you tell me? Sorry. Which college have you done? It's from BMS uh, College from Bangalore. <laughs> by, so by any chance, if you know. We did come to BMS and we did the demo and all also once. So Zenrays, we were quite a part of many college chain in Bangalore, including, uh, you know, uh, this BMS was there and also a very famous college, I forgot, it's in uh, Banshankri, uh, DSI, then and Sagar and all. So, okay. okay. We were quite there anyways, not a problem. How do you know about Zenrays? Like that's something I wanted to know. Like uh, I explored across the browser actually with saying should I go through and I, as per the reviews as if I will be very honest, I felt that the Zenrays would be the best thing, one of the best thing to go for. Yeah. Did you I talk to them? Uh, of the student, did you talk to them? No, I, I wasn't able to connect with any of the student actually. But I was like you better to start to democratize itself no problem, and see myself how it goes. Give the number, you know, I think these people then, you know, just openly ask questions whenever you want. So not a problem. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I'll definitely connect with them once. Yeah. So let's start with, the, you know, Paris. Uh, first thing, we'll start with creating a folder in the desktop. So as you told you, you know, you have some, you have any editor, right? So not a problem. Just create a folder and open this folder in your favorite editor. I use Sublime Text for no other reason that it is faster on my machine. Okay. But a good recommended editor is Visual Studio for development. Okay. So just like that, you can see here, right? Similar to that, you also can you just quickly uh, right now, you know, just uh, uh, as of now, uh, create a folder in the desktop and open it with our editor. Can you do that? And at any time, Paris, uh, you know, okay, I'll share the class with you also. I just forgot, you know, Paris. So I'll share that also with you so that you can see how the class is going. Okay. So also you'll get a fair idea of how we do things. Yeah, sure. And like, uh, I need to go to my editor and then I need to create a folder in that, right? Irrespective, just go to the desktop, create a fo folder called, you know, right now, uh, you can create a folder, yeah, create a folder called okay, like a normal folder on the desktop itself. Yes. And then open it in your editor. You can also directly go to the open your editor and create a folder with the help of that in desktop. Both are fine. Okay, sure. I'll just do it. Okay. So you can see I have, I have done this right now. You also do it at any at any time. If you have any issues, you can share your screen so that this is the way normally also classes will happen. Because the rule is everybody has to code in that session. Okay. That's yes, sure, sure, sure. I got that. I got that. Really got already that. understood everything. Good. So do it. Take your time. Take it easy. There is another student who will join maybe another 15, 20 minutes. Take it easy. I think he has already joined. Oh, Rajesh, you have already joined now. Rajesh, can you hear me? Okay, Rajesh said he was traveling, but uh, you know, he's into third year. He also wanted to explore the UI development. So first I'll tell you about the course. Okay, then we will continue further. So when we talk about this course, it is full stack, right? Okay. Okay. When you talk about full stack, full stack comprises of basically three main divisions. Starting with first is your UI development. Second is your sorry, UI design. Second is your UI development. And then we have one more that is your backend development. So these are the three main components of UI development. Okay. So three main components, as we discussed, are going to be UI design. UI development and backend development. These are the three things. Starting with first is the UI design. And what do you mean by UI design? Well, UI design means simply that we are going to understand how we will design the UI. Second, second is going to be your UI development. How do you develop the UI? 
And the third is going to be your backend development. That means how do we start working with the backend, like, you know, node and all those, yeah, no, yeah, node and all those things. Yeah, all those things comprise of the backend development. So these are the three main things. Yeah, these are the three main things when you talk about course. Yeah, when you talk about course, UI design, UI development, and backend development. Thank you so much, man. Okay. All right. Yes, yes. Okay, great. So now that you understand this thing, let's quickly start with first the technology that you're going to start with. Now, UI design means whenever you have a website. Okay, if you have a website, you will see that the website has actually three things, not one. Three things will be there at the website. That what makes any web application, Flipkart, Amazon, you say, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you say, there will be three components that basically make your application. And they are the first is what you see. Yeah, the first is what yeah. The first, yeah, the first is what you yeah. The first is what you see as a user. What do you see as a user in Flipkart? As a user, what do you see in Flipkart is how the UI looks like, isn't it? The buttons, the colors, and all those things. That makes your UI design. Second is going to be, a, yeah. Second is, yes, I am. Second is going to be the UI development. That means when you click on a button, then what happens, right? When you click on something, how do you get the data? All the things come from UI development. And there is one very, very important part, which most of the people do not know, which is the backend. Backend means what? When you let us say store your email or your orders or your orders or your or your orders or your payments or you know yeah or you know storing your passwords, all this data is stored in the backend. So there are three parts of it. First is the UI design and UI design. The second one is going to be your UI development. Which means when you click on a button, then what happens? All the logical part and the last is a backend. All these things together make a website, all these three components. And now, for example, let's say if I go to Amazon, okay, the buttons that you see, the images that you see, the list that you see, the text that you see, the design that you see, the design means how the yeah, design means how the page looks like, where is kept what. All these things is UI design look and feel the second so this is look and feel look and feel how do you see the look color and all those things you know look and feel and uh, yeah yeah look and feel and layout all this is your ui design ui development is all the logic ui development means all the logic what logic yeah what logic like what happens on clicks okay or showing data and all those things logical part and the backend is another game altogether and when we talk about backend the backend comprises of all the logic for example where is user detail store password payment all these important things are the backend which is also very 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 important and cannot be ignored so these are all the things we're talking about in the backend so this complete thing makes a e website in amazon when you click when you see a button that is ui design the color, the text and all. When you click on the button, then what it does, maybe making a payment request or etc., is the UI development. And then in the back end, the payment is processed, the orders, everything is your back end. Am I clear? Yes, definitely. Good. So see, I'll yeah. tell you one thing, guys, which is my rule of programming. About me, I'm Sumit. I'm having around 11 years experience and I'm from one of the IIT alumni in our team. And one thing I'll tell you, which I tell you, Never learn any technology. Never learn any technology. Thinking it as a technology. It's very simple. Everything that we create is created for real world. Do not try to goof yeah. Do not try to focus yeah. Do not try to focus on complexity, but simplicity of everything. Everything that we learn technologically is for a reason. It's not for making things complex. So when we talk about UI design, we need it for what? We need it for UI you know, look and feel, and there are many technologies which we use, but don't worry about technologies so much. They are not some rocket science. It's just that we should know what technology we need to know. HTML5, CSS, 
CSS3. Bootstrap, yeah, CSS3. <clears throat> Bootstrap, yeah. Bootstrap. Yeah, Bootstrap. They comprise of your, what? The programming languages that are needed for your front end. So these are the programming languages that you need in the front end, as simple as it is, nothing other than that. And these languages is what actually will make your UI design. That means if you use these languages, what will happen? Your UI gets created. Now UI alone will not do anything unless you have the logical part. What happens when you click on the button? All these things are taken care of by JavaScript, taken care of by, yeah, JavaScript, taken care of by ECMS 6, which is again JavaScript version 6. It's nothing rocket science, okay? Means advanced version, yeah. Java, yeah, JavaScript version 6, which means advanced version, you can say of JavaScript. Next thing, yeah, yeah. Next thing, React, yes, which is again a very important technology. All these things together will comprise of what? Will comprise of my UI development. That means all the logical part of it. And now remains the last part, which is the Muya. The last part, which is the most important part which is what happens when I click on a button. It will happen payment or you will store the user data, everything that is backend. And backend is a very big science and we use Node.js in the backend. We use MongoDB as the, we have MongoDB as the, at the backend. We use, you know, ExpressJS framework in the backend. We use AWS also to run our application. All these things comprise of my backend. And if we combine all the, if we combine all these things together, what do we get? we get our full stack. That means now with this knowledge, you can create any website like Flipkart, Amazon, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So these are the technologies together. It makes your what? It makes your full stack. All these things, technologies together gives you full stack. And we also call it MERN stack. Why MERN stack? Full stack means may making complete application. Marn stack means what are the technologies? What are the technologies of Marn stack? MongoDB stands for M. E stands for Express. R stands for React. N stands for Node. So all these things together, they make your Marn stack. Am I clear in this? Uh, yes. Good. So now we understand what we are talking about. So please look at this chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask because I really expect questions in the class also. And at the same time, I expect everyone to go. That is the rule which you have to always follow. Okay. So let me know if you have any questions. And see, there is nothing. See, I'll tell you one thing. There are two main. I would not do three ways in which you learn anything in life. Anything in life. First is the knowledge that is provided by somebody who knows what it is. Good faculty. Second is the practice. Without practice, nothing. Okay. And the third is doubt clearing because at every stage you will have doubts, questions. If you are learning and you're not having doubt, that means you are not learning. If you resolve these three things properly, you'll master anything. There is you know, nothing, uh, you know, very, very complex in that if you understand these three things. So third part is the question. So look at it and tell me if you have any questions around that. I'll be happy to resolve that. Too many arrows. So I'll just remove a couple of them. Shit. Yes. Let me write down again. Hmm. Okay, look at it and let me know if you have any questions around this. Yeah.
Is that clear? Uh, yes. I'm Good. Uh, how about you, uh, Rajesh? Uh, can you hear me? He's traveling, he said. So, anyways. So, can we start now? Hey, did you create a folder, by the way? Yes, I created a folder in my editor. I need to add file in that whatever you uh, tell that. A file called new and just create a file called, you know, app.html. So, I'm just going to create a new file here. Okay. Called app.html. I'll just save it in the same folder. App.html. Okay. And now I have a functionality here when I say HTML, automatically, you know, the code is generated. If you are not able to get this code running, not a problem. I'm just sending you the code. You also just, you know, try to run it. Come on. Yeah, I uh, copied that code in my add HTML file. Wonderful. So you know what is a tag, uh, you know, uh, or Amit? Sorry, Paras, do you know what is a tag in HTML? If you don't know, just say bluntly, I don't know. Don't worry about it, okay. Do you know what is a tag? As I told, like, I've... I, I've... I heard things and I've seen things, but I've never worked on it. So I really need to know the uh, proper concept. Like, why is it? What actually it does? It's very simple and stupid. I'll just quickly tell you. So see, let's start with the first. What is HTML? When you create a building, I repeat, when you create a building, you know, in a building, yeah, in a building, you need building blocks. What are those building blocks? Well, you need a pillar, isn't it? You need pillars to construct a building. You agree to that? Yes. You need bricks also? You agree to that? To layer, isn't it? You need some iron rods also? Yeah. Yeah. You need some iron rods also. <clears throat> you need some iron rods also. I know I'm, I'm talking pretty, you know, you know, regular stupid examples, but that is the way I like it because, you know, yeah. yeah no, you know, it's yeah. good actually. I'll try brain, to understand the function. Brain, from brain. I can tell you one thing. In every field in the world, if in the beginning you think it is simple, it will remain simple. If you think it is complex, you will always think it is complex and your brain works accordingly. So let's start with basic thing. When you create a building, what do you need in the building? Well, you need some iron pillars or let us say, sorry, not yet. Sorry, not iron pillars. Yeah, not iron pillars. You need concrete pillars. Then you need, of course, bricks to create a house. Because this is an actual real example, which I think it's so related. You need some other components like maybe steel, you know, rods and all those things, right? Iron, we call them as, uh, yeah. I don't know, there's a particular name, but iron, uh, you know, rods. To support, to support, yeah, yeah, to support roof. Simple, nothing complicated. Now here's the thing, guys. You for building, you need of course all these raw materials like bricks, like iron concrete pillars, iron rods, and so many other things. Well, that creates a building, but who gives the beautiful color, the ambience, and all? Who gives those things? Architect, right? Or interior design, isn't it? Yes, yes. Correct? In, yeah, yeah, correct. Interior design. So, right, interior design. Interior design gives the color, the feel, where should we keep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Color, feel, where should we keep water? Down? And finally, there is one very, yeah. And finally, there is one very important part, which is electricity, motors. Fridge, yeah, fridge, 
TV, etc. All these gadgets that make the house. Correct. So yeah, correct. So one thing is what for for setting up the raw material. Another is for designing it. Another is for logic electricity. So you can say that in when you create web pages, all the raw material is provided by whom? Is provided by HTML. This is the raw material provided. You want a button, HTML will give you. You want a paragraph, HTML will give you. You want text, we will give you HTML. Then who is the interior designer? Make a guess. The interior designer is CSS and CSS3. They are the interior designer. They do interior design, color, decoration. All these things are done by them. And who is the last person? Can you tell me? This is JavaScript. All the logical part, logic part. When I click on this button, what happens? Pan starts, right? When I keep my food in the fridge, what happens? Cooling happens. All this is what? Logical with JavaScript. So when we create a page, the first thing is what? Raw material design, which is my HTML. And these tags are called raw materials. For example, starting with the stupid tag called title, the rule of the tag is simple. You have an opening tag and a closing tag for most of the tags. And inside that, you will keep whatever you want to keep. So what will you keep inside title? Page title. Do you agree? You want a heading? Write H1. H1 means heading level 1. Very, very simple. Agreed? Now save it. These two things. Only these two things you have to save. And right click and open in the browser or make it live. There is some option in Visual Studio. Okay, make it live or something. You can see it. And what you are seeing here? You are seeing here, welcome to skill cone. Yes or no? See, this is a raw material, okay? Brick, cement, and all those things. And what is this? Page title. Simple as it is. So can you try these two simple things and tell me if it is working? Come on. Can you do these things? Yes, Paris. And yeah, guys, I just want to talk. Yes, I'm just it. doing it. I'm just doing it. I'll, I'll Take it tight. If you're not able to get it, I'll help. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm just uh, doing it. Take your time. No. Inside body, you created one more tag, a heading tag, right? Yeah, I'm, you're not audible. Uh, seems I'm sorry. Right. I'm saying this is the raw material. If you want a heading, where will you keep heading? Inside H1 tag. Now, when okay. you start a tag, you have to close the tag. So that inside that you can keep the material. What is the material? Welcome to skill cone. So what things comes inside head and what things comes inside the body tag? I'm going to tell you. Yes, yes, I'm going to tell. You. But for now, just forget it and take it right. For now, understand if I want title, I can keep inside head. For I want body inside, keep it inside that one. Then I will tell you. See, if I okay. do a lot of children, my mind will like, okay, nice story I heard. But you know, if you if I tell you story, you remember 10%. If I show you movie, you remember 70%. Right? So let's code with the movie. That's it. Okay. So do it. Then I'll tell you all these tags in depth and now only. First, get comfortable you now to see and how we can code. Let's do that.
Yeah, I got that. It's, it's, I'm able to see that in my browser screen. Awesome. Can you share your screen? I just wanted to make confirm that you know you can see. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Is... Usually, I'll do this in the classes also. Okay. Yeah, can you see it? Good, I can see it. Can you show me the code? Uh, this is my code. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Wonderful. That's pretty much good. So see, now you have some feel and confidence. Now your questions will come. What is this and what is that? So let's now start with what exactly we are talking about. Okay, and then we'll continue. So. Let's start again. And we'll start by understanding the tags. So let's go one by one to understand these tags and then we will continue further from there. Starting with first and the most, you know, you know, usually asked tag is my not doc type HTML. People ask, what is this tag? Yeah, not doc type HTML. This tag, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this tag is a very crazy tag because this tag, you no, know, not doc type HTML. You will see that this tag actually doesn't have a closing tag. You can see most of the tags have a closing thing now, but some tags don't have a closing tag because closing is when you want to keep something in there. Now this tag has only one purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is to tell the browser, hey browser, it will tell the browser and what it's going to tell? It's going to tell the browser that I am HTML version five. So let's start with what is the purpose of this particular tag. And the purpose is, to tell, yeah, sorry. To tell browser that the code below is version version five of HTML of HTML. So browser will accordingly work to get output. Because browser will say, ye batao, which version it is. Is it version 2, version 3, version 4, version 5? And you say it is version 5. So browser will say, okay, no problem. Then accordingly, I will, you know, make sure that whatever you are seeing here is tuned in for version 5. So that is what it is. To tell browser that the code below what I am showing you is version 5. So the browser will accordingly, you know, give you the output. And now what is the next tag? Well, the next tag I'm talking about is my simple tag, which is HTML tag. It is like the main root tag. The root tag means root tag means everything comes inside. Yeah, everything, yeah, everything is kept inside this tag, like the boundary of your house, right? Every code will be inside the HTML tag which is also simple to understand, but the complicated part is head section. And what is this head section? Well, head contains header information. What is header information? If I'm saying, hey, Paris, do you know what happened today? It was a very funny day, you know, because we had a lot of discussion on, let us say, maybe, you know, our college uh, principal. Now, Paris, did I tell you the information? What happened? Or I just told you the information about the information. Tell me that. You just only told me that there's an information that what? No, I told you the information about the information, isn't it? Yes, actually. Yeah. This is what head tag contains. It tells you the information about what is going to come inside the body. And what I'm telling here, I'm telling here, okay, see, what is here? I have a care set here. Character set means character set. Now, you, if you write German, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you write German or Canada, you will have different care set. So character set which is UTF-8 right now for English, for other languages we'll have other type of character set. So I'm telling you this now, this is not related to actual data, but the information for the data. Meta name equal to viewport content. This is just basically to tell you that, yeah, this is just basically to tell you that the width of the page should be the same as device width, which means if I open it in a mobile phone, yeah, if I open it in a mobile phone, yeah, mobile phone, then yeah, mobile phone, then it will be covering the entire mobile phone with screen. If I open it in a laptop, then it will show me the entire screen, entire data in the laptop. It is how the content should be visible, simple. So that is another thing. Now, when we talk about the next thing, title, again, title is not related to the page. You see, it is in the top of the page, right? 
So that means title is to tell you what is the title of the page and then we close it. So all the information about the information like how content will appear in devices, in sorry, yeah, in different devices. This is what your meta tag will tell you. Cool. What about the next thing? Well, the next thing is title. You know what is title? Page title, simple. Again, page title is not related to the actual page. It is just the title. So all these are tags and they have a specific purpose because at the end of the day, who is showing you the output? The browser. I repeat, who is showing you the output? The browser. That means entire HTML actually runs in the browser. Correct. So these tags just tell the browser about what you should do with the code and the output. And the next thing is the body. Now, everything that is visible to you is in the body type. So whatever you see, whatever user sees, for most of the cases, is in body type, main area. That is the real information. That is the body type. And H1 is for what? For creating heading. You will have different tags for different purpose. H1 is for heading. And we call it as level one heading, which means highest size heading. We also have H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Simple, nothing complicated. Am I clear? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, one thing, uh, one yeah. thing I want to uh, know, like uh, we created this heading tag within the body tag, right? And when I uh, ran that uh, code in my browser, I was able to see that welcome to whatever I gave, right? I gave Paris as the... Sorry, can you see it again? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. It's just that, you know, I was uh, not able to understand your question. Can you say it again? Like whatever we see uh, from the browser and it's like whatever we write in that body tag, right? Inside the body tag, we, whatever we write, we'll see that hmm, correct. browser. So yeah. like title won't be visible there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, as you told that uh, this, it's this head. title is if you see here uh, the output, and you would see that the title of the page is visible in the top, but not inside the main body, right? That is what I was trying to say. So let me okay. show you. Here, look at the output. This title is here, right? Mm, this is the title. No? It's not a part of the main page, right? It is just to so, be. Uh, Can you see this title? Oh, yes, yes, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So this is ideally not considered to be a part of the main content here. It is just a title. Okay, it's just a convention. So the idea is title is usually kept in the head. That's why. But tell me now, what is the question? Explain me again. Like that's what key. Uh... Uh, because of this head tag and HTML tag, browser will get to know that something is running and we need to show the output. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. So even so if we uh, if we don't write this head and title tag, so the HTML protocol won't work. No, that is not the way. This is what is the classical thing. People will think that if I don't keep a tag, it will see HTML is very different. There is no logic in HTML. Okay. For example, you know, HTML itself doesn't correct in law. There's no error in HTML. Why? Because it is not a programming language. I repeat, because it is not a programming language. There is no mind into HTML. Yeah, yeah, there is no mind into HTML. If you keep a heading here, it will work. If you don't keep a heading here, it will not work. So rule of HTML is whatever you don't keep and show will not be visible. But no error will come because there is no hard and fast rule. You don't want a title, no problem. Now it is default the page, you know, uh, you know, name that is coming as title. You don't keep meta, fine. It will still work. You don't keep not doc type also, it will work. But now it will work randomly. Randomly means it will not know what version to use. So browser will automatically think and do whatever it wants. So it means HTML is not a programming language. It is just a presentation language to be a presentation language to present something. Correct. You see, there is my slight difference however. See now, when I reload the page, see, it's coming down, right? Can you see that? Yes. So the idea is simple. He remembers, oh, it is HTML5. So I'll follow all the rules. One rule is that you have to give some space and all. Correct. If a person, yeah, yeah, if a, yeah, if a person comes to me in a road, in a plain cloth, 
versus in a police dress, whom will I give more respect? The police. Because he's telling what I am. If you don't tell what you are, then you will be treated like others randomly. You know? So that is what is the behavior. So the rule of HTML, there is no error. And that is why it is so cool also. It will not tell you, Bhai, yeah, you have not done this, you have not done that. No, it will not tell you. But you will know what's going to happen based on the output. Because it's not a programming language, it is a presentation language. To present things, there is no logic in HTML. You get it? Yes, this is now. So basically, okay. it's a presentation language. So even if we uh, want to remove anything, it will still work. Absolutely. So the time it's there in the body tag. Yes. If you only keep the body, it will still work. If you remove all the stop and keep the body, it will still work. But that's not the way you should do things, right? Correct? Uh, yes. in, yeah. Yeah. In our house, you can keep your footwear even in your kitchen instead of outside. But that's a bad practice. So like it's basically the set of rules that we need to follow while coding in HTML. Like there are things that we should do. Yes, hundred well. percent. But there are some rule checkers who will check the rule. Okay, there are certain things I will tell you in the coming time. But yes, when nobody sees what you're doing, then there are some rules and some there are some tools that will we will use to follow whether you are following the rule or not. Okay, simple. So you understand now basics of the tags. Now let us try to move a little further so you know level one heading just copy paste and write here level two here you write l2 which means level two so we make it h2 <clears throat> similar to that do h3 just to get comfortable then do h4 this is the type of tags we have then do h5 so we have from one to six, and every time you will see that the size of the font will change. Now we have another thing called paragraph. Paragraph is so paragraph to keep some content. And we have div, div is something like a box. We will do a lot in the coming time. Then we have something called uh, a para. Okay, these are some of the main tags which we'll play. Button, yeah, button. So see, you write button, click here, and the button is ready. Simple, isn't it? So these are some of the tags which you don't need to remember. Just code them, and you will automatically understand in the coming time. Okay. So no need. There's no rocket science in them. Automatically, you will understand. So let's try to see how they look like. Go back, reload page. Level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. Wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, I have not created five, no? Yeah, you haven't created five. And then the six also, you started with each one. Yeah. So now it will be there. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a paragraph. This is the div tag and this is the box. This is so simple. Just open, keep content and close. Nothing to do. Right? Simple. So this is the H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, paragraph, paragraph, div, button. So why don't you also write this piece of code and just see if you're able to get it working? Come on. <clears throat> I have to wear something. I'm all little tired.
uh, yes, I'm able to do that. It's running in the browser. You're not audible. I think mic is off. Yeah. So, hey, can you show me the output, uh, uh, Paris? Yeah, just just. So, just show me is working, no? So, are you able to get the output? Uh, okay. Oh yeah, it's pretty simple, right? Hey, what is this checkbox you created yourself? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Okay, some symbol is coming now. Okay, fine, fine. I think maybe that's probably. Can you see the checkbox next to the button? No, not here in the output. Yeah, what is that? Oh, that's probably something in the operating system. It's not related to the code. So, is that clear? Tell me. Yeah, Paris, is, is that clear? What uh, we yes, it's clear. Uh, it's clear now. Uh, that checkbox, I uh, I didn't do that, but I don't know from where it came. No, no, it's probably from operating system, not from the code. So take it light, not a problem. That's okay. We can ignore that. So Paris, you understood. This is what this is the building block, right? Now come okay. back to the beautification or the interior design. For that, now here is the thing, Paris. Very simple. If you want to give food in a thali. In a thali, if you want to give food, okay. Now let the thali looks pretty ugly. Let's make it better. <laughs> so I, I just want to give you these examples because you know these stupid examples is what actually make us give us a clarity sometimes. If there is a thali, and in the thali I have only one dish, maybe biryani or whatever you like, then it is very simple for me to say yeah, yeah, biryani. So yeah, yeah. So it is very simple for me to serve. But if I have to serve you other things, I need different type of uh, you know bowls, right? So I'll have to create one bowl for raita, and I have to create. Uh, okay, so So if I'm going to serve you biryani, as I told you, it's very simple. But if I have to give you raita along with biryani, what I need to do is I need to give you in a separate bowl, right? If I have to give you, you know, some other dish, I have to give you in a separate bowl. I hope you agree. It's no rocket science here. But why am I telling you this is for a reason? The idea is that whenever we have one thing and we want to share other thing, we have to separate them with some boundary, right? Which is the bowl in this case. I hope you agree to that. Now, similar to that logic comes here. This is HTML and you want to write what? You want to write CSS. So the rule is there is a tag called style and inside that you will keep all the CSS code. Get it? Yes? Oh uh, Yes, okay. So now the CSS code is also pretty stupid. It's very simple to write. Now, let us say I want to change, yeah. Let us say I want to change the, yeah. I want to change the color of, yeah, color of this heading H1. How can I change the color of this heading? Well, first I need to do what I need to change. I need to change H1, H1 tag, so I will write H1. And in curly braces, I want to write all the properties that I want to give to this H1 tag. Like color, maybe I can give green, and I can give font size, and I can make it as, uh, or not font size, maybe font instead of size, border. Four pixel solid blue. That means give a color of green and a border of four pixels solid and blue color. So who will get these properties? The heading tag. Right? Now similar to that, I can give properties to other people also. I can also give properties in CSS and that is a simple logic. Let us say for paragraphs. Color you give blue this time. Border you give two pixel solid, maybe magenta color. So that is a way we can assign. Now you see the rule is simple. Whatever you want, you want to color your brick, you want to color your pillar in the house. 
you have to tell which pillar, which house you tell here. And then you assign those properties, save it. And now if you go back and look at your page, it has all the things applied. So who is the interior designer? The CSS. Can you see that? And that's how you write it. Now the rule is simple, property value. So what is this you see here? Property, what is C you see this here? Value and a semicolon to separate. So the rule is simple. First is the property. And then the value and semicolon is the separator mm -hmm. to separate multiple properties, right? So can you also now write this and check if you're able to get the output? Come on. So we get style to keep the CSS tag out of the HTML. And to target which you want to target, you can target using H1, P, and so on. And your job is done. And that is your interior design. Yeah, I'll just try it once. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I was able to do that. It's working in my browser. Okay, just show me the output. <clears throat> yeah, just a second. So, have you done any C or C plus plus programming for us before? Just a second. Can you see it? Yeah, good. It's looking fine. I'm good. It's looking fine. 
Uh, you tried the dashed one. That is good. Very nice. So did you do any programming before in C or C++ or Python, anything in your college? Yeah, uh, I did uh, in .NET actually C sharp. Like not a major one, but uh, some part of it. That's pretty chill. Then I will tell you the next thing, which is the JavaScript. Now I told you the decoration part. I told you the, uh, you know, the building. Oh, one question I have, like before we proceed further, like we gave a paragraph, we gave a division, right? So like, mm -hmm. what is the difference in the, and when we use this division and like, is there okay. something? Paragraph is only for text. So the rule of paragraph is you cannot keep anything inside a paragraph because it is used to keep some text, nothing other than that. You can't keep a heading inside a paragraph. Whereas div is a box. You can keep another paragraph inside a div that is allowed. So div is a box. It's a container to keep whatever you want to do, whatever you want to keep. You can keep a heading, anything can be kept inside a div, but you cannot keep anything inside a paragraph. Paragraph can be kept inside anything, but you it cannot keep anything inside that. So it cannot be parent of anybody, whereas the div is used to really contain things, including text, including tags, anything. So if you want to keep a lot of text together, you have to use div tag for that. Got it? Okay, like if you need to use multiple tags, we need to use div in that. Absolutely. Thing. And you can see now they are fitting in properly inside that. Okay. Good. Next question. Yeah, that's all. That's okay. All. Now we understood last thing. Yeah, you now understood last thing. So if you want to keep JavaScript, you can write a script tag. As like style, we have a script tag. And let me write function. So to write a function, you can write function, say hello. And it is very easy to write in JavaScript, not like Java. And if you write alert, hello, it will say hello when you call this function. And you know how to call function, right? Yeah, right? Yes, yes, sir. We'll, we'll pass that function. Yeah, yeah. Save it. Now, this is, yeah. Yeah. Now, this particular part, which is JavaScript, will get an error if you don't write it properly. So, function should be, yeah, yeah. So, function should be capital, small yeah, f, you know, small f. Say hello, may usually h is the second one, which is capital. Alert should be alert only, not capital A. Now, and, and semicolon is also recommended. And then calling the function. So now everything has to be as per the law. law. And after you have written it, JavaScript yeah. will call the say hello function and you will get an alert box saying hello. Let me see it now. Here's the thing. Reload. And you can see hello. And you can click OK. And then see everything. Right? So... Why don't you also write it and then tell me if you're able to get it?
yes, I'm able to do that. All right. Can you show me now? Yeah, just a second. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen now. Click on it. So it gives that alert. Hi, I. Very nice. Okay. Next thing. Now, yeah, yeah. Next thing now is uh, yeah is uh, that we can actually connect these two things together. How do we do that? So you see, I want to do some simple thing that when I click on the button in an HTML. Then this function is triggered and it's very simple we can write on click which means when you click then call the function say hello so now i have connected html to javascript with some event entry. save it and remove this say hello we don't want the say hello to come when the you know the code loads and now i'm going to just reload again and you see when I click on the click me button, the hello is triggered, right? So the rule is simple. Now, rather than connecting it whenever the page loads, I'm going to now connect it with the event here. And when I click on it, then the function is triggered. Simple. And that is the way now the logic can be connected to the UI element, right? Simple. So just give it a try and let me know if you are able to get it. Yeah, are you able to do it, uh, Paras? Uh, yeah, just a second, sir. I'll take a mistake. Time. I'm doing. I'll...
uh, yes, I'm able to do it. Okay. Can you share your screen now? Yeah, just a second. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, can you try again? Click. No, first you have to click on OK. Yeah, because. Yes, yes. So okay. if I click now, it sends me this. Good. Got it. All right. You got it. So I think we'll stop here itself, Paris. So you got the idea that today only you learned a lot of things, right? In terms of what is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It was just one hour. One hour you were able to code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Just for one reason and time. Because you okay. did and got down. Simple. If I had to teach you theory of all these things, it might have probably taken me three to four hours. Right? Yes. That is why I say that if you do hands on, you are able to learn more and your confidence in more. So, whatever I explained to you, probably you are not able to, now able to understand how it goes. Now, you might uh, have yes. a, yeah. Yeah. You might have now seven, eight, or 10, or 12 people, but irrespective of how many we have, we check the screens, we resolve the doubt, and then we move to the next discussion. It is always there. So if you follow that, I think, and yeah, one more thing is there. So along with this, there is one more thing that is given to you guys. So let me share the screen to show you. Now, every batch, we have our own platform, by the way. Uh, let me show you. So we'll give you access to that platform also and to the cloud also. Right. Two things we'll give you. So this is our platform. So, yeah. you know, it has, yeah, yeah, it has a lot of things, but uh, yeah, but the point is for you, you just need to log in and you will get your own, uh, you know, for example, this is my full stack previous batch. So every day you will get three things, reading material, assignment and exam. So look, for example, if it is for October, uh, you know, sixth, then you will get first reading material, whatever I taught you, something little more than that to understand. And then after that, you have to read and code it, which will take a couple of hours. And then there is an ASEAN, yeah, couple of hours, and there is going to be an assignment also, like this. Yeah, assignment also, like this. Yeah, like this. <laughs> this is assignment. Okay, which you have to also make sure that you are able to do. And only if you've done these assignments, then only I'm going to allow you to attend a class. Usually that is a, you got it. And of course, sometimes a video to understand the problem. So that is how it's going to be on a daily basis. So make sure that you do them and come to the class. Got it? Oh, uh, yes, I got that. All right, fine. So if you have any questions, sorry for the background noise. I'm traveling, no, that is why. But uh, tell me if you have any questions. No, no, that's all for it. I really love the way of explanation. Rajesh, Rajesh, do you have any questions? You could not attend. I know the demo, but you just said you will. Are you there? Rajesh? I think he was traveling, he said. So, nevertheless. So that is in Paris. Our batch is already formed, as I told you. We have been doing one or two demo classes. So the class timing is 8 to 9.30 p.m. And uh, starts Monday to Friday. Alternate Saturday, we have interview, mock interview session. So that is how we use. Okay. So the batch has already started, right? Not started. We have doing some demo classes right now. There are, I think, four people who have subscribed right now. And in the next week, there will be another three, four people. So once we reach a number, then we'll stop the registrations. As of now, it's ongoing. So yes, that is the state. So like what will be the batch size actually while we while I actually attend the start? typical right now, four people have four or five have confirmed right now. So another maybe typical batch size is around 10 to 12 is a peak. Okay. So minimum they should they will be 10 and then only will start the batch. No, no, no. Batch is already started because people have already paid the fee. So if there are four also, usually it doesn't happen. But uh, the thing is, it's already started. People have registered. So now we will continue irrespective. Batch is formed just to pack. Even if there are four or five, we'll continue, not a problem. Okay. So when are the proper classes starting for that? From Monday or 
Okay. See, we have two demo classes in which people join. The proper classes are going to start from Monday evening, 8 p.m. Yeah. Monday evening, 8 p.m. Okay. Okay. And it will go from 8 to 9 30. 8 to 8 15, doubt clearing. Then till 9 30, we'll have classes. Uh, one thing I need to know, let's suppose after the classes, if I'm, I'm uh, practicing myself, as you told from that given, given that uh, platform, right? And mm -hmm. I take this as much. If I get stuck somewhere at that very moment, so how will I clarify that? Okay, so first thing, uh, it happens very rarely. I'll tell you why. Because I only give what I've taught you. That is my rule. If you're stuck, you can contact in the WhatsApp group. We are available. We'll reply you in the WhatsApp group. Or any of the people who are present in the WhatsApp group, they'll help you. And if you are stuck also, not a problem in the evening. You can again, you know, uh, you know, uh, get back to us when the class is there and you can ask as many times as you want. That's not a problem. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that is the thing. But please ask as many doubts here. See, people have a misconception that when you let people ask doubts, they have more doubts. When you ask doubts, your doubts will decrease in time. When you code practically, your speed increases in time. That is what is my observation. So believe me, there are times when I nobody has to share the screen because everybody gets out. Which is randomly checked because sometimes people get lazy, but I don't allow that. But it's always like. So starting we'll have more and more things, but with time, you know, with understanding it will go down. Okay, okay. Okay, guys, so I think that is all for now. Uh, you know, you can just confirm me, uh, Paris. Uh, maybe by Sunday evening also you can confirm any of his classes have already started. 8 to 9.30 is the time you fixed. Yes, sure, sure. I'll, you know, I'll confirm.